on Friday, July 27th, the Justice Sri Krishna Committee finally submitted its report and draft bill to the Ministry of Electronics and IT. Now, India is the country with the second largest number of internet users and yet we don't have a data protection framework, which is why this was a very big deal. The Supreme Court last year in the right to privacy judgment emphasized the need for data protection. And what is this all about? It's saying your personal data, anything which can identify you, should only be processed, which means collected or used or displayed with your consent under certain conditions, with certain safeguards, regulated by a data protection authority. So that's what this whole framework is all about. The first point here is data ownership. Now the question is who owns the data that is held by private or government entities? Now that is uh, a question that we were hoping for the draft bill to answer firmly in the favor of users, but that matter. sadly hasn't happened. Now, personal data is supposed to be processed only with consent. Sensitive personal data, including your sexual orientation, financial data, etc. All of that can only be processed with explicit consent. Unless you're the government, which can process your data uh, without your consent if it relates to a function of the state. Now this can be anything, whether it's some any sort of function of parliament or of a state legislature, and expressly includes things like providing services, providing benefits, uh, giving issuing of licenses. In all these circumstances, the state can just sort of look at your data, process it without your consent. So obviously this raises large questions for uh, state sanctioned surveillance and speaking of surveillance, data localization. Now data localization is problematic for two reasons. First, as we mentioned surveillance, mandating that a copy of every Indian citizen's personal data be stored in servers within India raises serious questions about surveillance of that data and whether it actually goes on to protect the data any better. And second is it endangers the open nature of the internet where data should be allowed to flow freely with disregard to geographic borders. Because essentially it's saying that even data which relates to something you're doing with a website or a service abroad, a copy of that at least has to be kept in India. Critical personal data can only be stored in India, but there's no definition of what critical personal data is. And when it comes to surveillance reform, there's also other issues here. Now, the government uh, has a power under Section 98 of this Act to give directions to the Data Protection Authority on the basis of security of the state. Wide sweeping things, could be anything. And they can ask the Data Protection Authority to process data, give it data, anything of the sort. There's powers for doing this when it comes to uh, investigation of offenses, pro uh, prosecution of offenses, prevention of offenses. And all of this now, while it tenuously has, is supposed to you know, fall within the framework which the right to privacy judgment set out. It's a bit dodgy because the government currently has a lot of powers and surveillance especially under existing rules which are extremely archaic and antiquated like the, uh, the, the IT Act and the, and the Telegraph Act of all things. There is a very strange provision here which says that if there is a breach of personal data, the person who's processing it, the data fiduciary, has to tell the data protection authority. But there is no obligation for anyone to tell you, the person whose data has been stolen. Exactly. So breach uh, notification is an important aspect of any strong uh, privacy and data protection framework. But breach data notification is something that again has slipped through the cracks. Another big question, Aadhaar Sushovan. What does this do for that? So with regards to the Aadhaar, uh, the draft bill says that it is important to protect the Aadhaar number. But in doing so, it ignores the entire class of other data that makes up this Aadhaar ecosystem. So it is much, impo much more important, especially in the light of so many Aadhaar leaks and data breaches that we have been reading about, to protect all the classes of data in the Aadhaar ecosystem. So, I mean, the, one of the entire points behind this act was trying to get that pr data protected. And it doesn't seem to be doing that. In fact, by making this carve out for government processing of data for services and welfare benefits, it's actually, again, perhaps even strengthening the government's ability to pick up your Aadhaar data Data and, and use it. Um, they want to amend the RTI Act here, according to the, the, the committee. They want to amend it to say that, look, we're going to have a very strict test on the basis of which personal information can be revealed even under the RTI, even if it's a public figure like the Prime Minister or someone. So you have to check harm to the person versus the public interest. Whereas earlier it used to just be, is there public interest? Is it an unwarranted uh, intrusion to privacy? This concept of harm, not quite defined. So we're not surprised that the bill has so many problems. Uh, to understand that better, three important points of how the Sri Krishna Committee itself has functioned. First, lack of civil society participation. Now the committee itself has been uh, filled with members of the government or people who have worked closely with the government. Including the UIDAI CEO. So I mean, they're the Aadhaar guys and they're on the committee. 
Second, a weak public consultation process. Now, the committee did not make public uh, the submissions made by, uh, by the citizens regarding the white paper, nor did it make public its own reactions to the submissions made. And third, and most importantly, it ties to the question of opaqueness. The committee has worked opaquely without transparency, including rejecting RTI requests for information. Why the secrecy? Luckily, this is not going to be the final law. Uh, Ravi Shankar Prasad, IT Minister, has said they will get further scrutiny, get further consultation. So hopefully that will happen. So this bill is, before it goes to Parliament, is improved upon and actually adequately addresses the data protection and privacy concerns of Indian citizens.